Yes, it's time for Flintstones! In 1960, Hanna-Barbera gave the world the Flintstones, an animated sitcom about the day-to-day -day life of Fred, his wife Wilma, and their neighbors Barney and Betty. The show's main hook was that it took place in the Stone Age, and while their world had modern amenities, it was prehistoric takes on them. Like most of their appliances were repurposed dinosaurs or other creatures, a joke that the show ran into the ground on every single episode. The show aired on primetime, which was something no other cartoon had ever done before, and the writing of the show was tailored towards both kids and adults, making it one of the earliest cartoons to cater to adults. Yeah, I think I remember some adult jokes, like when Fred hits Barney in the dick with a hammer. Barney, say goodbye to your balls! <laughs> Though by no means the first cartoon aimed at adults, its impact would later shape shows like The Simpsons and ugh, Family Guy, which is ironic because Seth MacFarlane tried to reboot the Flintstones, but the Fox Network took one look at the pilot script and said hell no. So we dodged a bullet there. Thanks, Fox. I got an erection. For three whole decades, the Flintstones was the world's most financially successful and longest running animated TV series, and TV Guide called it the second greatest TV cartoon of all time. In both of those accolades, it was overthrown by The Simpsons. Here's the thing, though. You see, I think The Flintstones is okay, but that's all. Just okay. I'm sure it was entertaining back in its day, but its day has come and gone. Which makes me think, will a newer generation decades after me find The Simpsons not funny or entertaining? Even the best seasons of it? Maybe it's just evolution and progress. The Flintstones was good, it's just kind of dated now. But enough about the show, let's talk about the games. Now there were several Flintstones games and I'm not gonna play every single one. I picked out the ones which are the most interesting out of the bunch. So let's start our journey on MS-DOS with Dino Lost in Bedrock. <laughs> Yeah, I already used that joke, but it's funny, damn it. This is PC gaming at its finest, children. Oh, wow, you have separate buttons for jumping in a direction. What's Fred doing just standing around in a sewer? There's a lot of prehistoric poop in there that hasn't fossilized yet. You know, it's funny I say that. I used to have a book called Prehistoric Poop, which is apparently so obscure I could only find one little small thumbnail of it. And it's made by a company called Troll. Don't you love that? So the jump is really fucked up in this game. Up is jump as it tends to be in these crappy games. You know, I feel like I've said the phrase up is jump so many times, it's almost become a catchphrase. I should sell a shirt that says up is jump. Uh oh, watch out for the crocodile. Watch out for those. So if you want to jump high, you have to continue holding up and then it'll keep going like a normal jump. Now you press diagonally right or diagonally left and you'll nudge ever so slightly in that direction. And you jump and move so slow too. I know I could turn the CPU speed up, but then the game would look like this. <laughs> This game is completely unplayable anyway. They put so many enemies and a one-hit death that it's just, it's impossible. But it's made by the same people that made the MS-DOS Mega Man port, so I shouldn't expect much. This game feels like it was made in the Stone Age. Next we have the Flintstones on Sega Master System. Now this was put on tons of computers, but the Sega Master System is the one I want to look at because there's a particular scene in this game that became a small meme in a forum I used to be on. <laughs> Oh my god, I love that big crush yabba dabba doo. Ha <laughs> ha, there it is! Fred must paint the wall! Fred must cover the blood spatter! Fred must hide the bodies! Well, I guess I gotta paint this wall. Okay, I'm pushing every button. The wall ain't getting painted. Uh, what do you do? Well, apparently this little guy is the paintbrush. Guess I better get it. Pebbles, you get back in that crib, you little baby fuck. I just noticed that the house has no ceiling. The hell, Fred? You're so broke you can't afford a ceiling? What is this BMF thing about, bitch-ass motherfucker? Apparently every time you pick up Pebbles, you lose your paintbrush and you have to go get it again. Fred, you have two hands! You gotta tell me you can't just grab a baby by the neck. So you hold the A button to paint the wall and every time you do you have less and less paint so it covers less surface area. So you gotta go back to the bucket and get more paint. Pebbles, quit drawing on the wall! Fucking Wilma should have swallowed you, you little shit. It feels like it takes forever to paint this wall too. Because not only do you have to paint this bottom part, you gotta paint the top part too and you gotta move this ladder every single time. I don't know about you, but doing household chores is not something I wanna do in a video game. 
but this is just the first level, and this isn't all you do. You also gotta get to the bowling alley before it closes, which involves a very aggravating level where every time you hit a rock, a wheel falls off your car, then you gotta jack up the car, get the wheel, put it back on, and then get back on the road. You have to tap the buttons a certain way to get the jack to work, and I never did really get it right. Put the wheel on. Put the wheel on! God gummit, put the damn wheel on! Come on now! There, there we go. Oh, you are shitting me right now! Yeah, you can jump over the rocks, but then it takes a moment before it'll let you jump again, and then by then, you done hit the other rock! Jump, jump... Oh, that is not fair! I jumped over the rock! I guess if I could say one thing, the more I put this wheel on, the faster I can do it. It's like after a while, you get used to the shit controls. It's that Stockholm Syndrome setting in, getting used to shit. Fred must beat Barney. To death. So now I know what this is for, it's for the bowling. And guys, this bowling level takes forever! And it actually took me a while to figure out how to play it. Cause you gotta adjust where you are, what direction you're gonna throw the ball, and then how fast you're gonna throw the ball, and then actually throw the ball. They put way too much effort into this. This could have just been a Flintstones bowling game. This whole thing took me like an hour or so to do, and it took me a lot of practice throws to even get it right. So naturally, I was going to lose on my first try, but you have to play the whole thing, regardless whether or not you've already lost. And guys, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't take it. I guess they didn't really know how to make a Flintstones game, so they just decided to make it like you're playing a day in the life of Fred. You're doing chores, you're going bowling, you do bowling, and then you turn the game off because you can't beat the bowling game. Well, that's enough out of this one. Fred must buy a better game. But therein lies the good news. There are better Flintstones games. Most of the 8 and 16-bit Flintstones games were actually made by Taito, who actually makes pretty decent games. Does that mean I'm gonna go easy on these games? Hell no. So let's start off on the one that you're probably waiting on. Get ready for it, because here it comes. The Flintstones, the rescue of Dino and Hoppy. Oops, uh, wrong ROM. There we go. I don't know if anybody's ever said this, but I think this is a really good 8-bit rendition of the Flintstones theme. I'd say it's right up there with the DuckTales NES intro. So all the main characters are hanging out outside, including Hoppy and Gazoo. I really think it's weird that these characters are in the game, because Hoppy didn't show up till the fifth season and Gazoo was on the very last season. And suddenly this creepy looking guy with a time machine shows up and captures Dino and Hoppy. He plans to go back to the future and take them to the Orbit City Zoo. And if you don't know, Orbit City is where the Jetsons came from. He then destroys Gazoo's time machine and then spreads the pieces all over the world. And now it's up to Fred to get all the pieces and go to the future. Now I knew about this game before it became popular because we had a movie rental place in my town back in the 90s. And I rented this game from there. And I remember I didn't get very far. So playing this game again was like a nostalgia trip for me. And apparently I still suck at it. Your main weapon is your club and you can hold the B button to charge it. And you can get sub weapons too, which really help with the bosses. Some of the bosses are really hard in this game, but some of them you can literally cheese without getting hit. There's this one perfect spot you can get to where you can hit this guy in the head with your sub weapon and not get hit by the flames. And about three hits will take him down. He is way harder to try to kill with the club. They must know that too, because they give you the ax right before you get to him. At this point, you get an overworld and you can go wherever you want. There's a bonus basketball game that you can play, and for an NES basketball game, it's surprisingly fun. And it gets more difficult every time you play it, but even the most difficult version of it is still pretty easy. I bet you that basketball is supposed to be made out of stone. How much of a badass do you have to be to dribble a stone ball? It's a stone, Luigi. Go touch grass! Something I thought was weird. You know, they got two of these kind of bad guys. One shoots you, and one does not. Despite the fact it clearly has a gun in its hand. It's only the ones that hide in the corners. What, did they forget to code the other one to shoot you? Even though this game can get hard at times, it's extremely fair for the most part. You'll steadily find one-ups, life hard, an item that gives you more max hit points, a burger that makes your charge meter bigger, and you get infinite continues. So the game gives you no excuse to not keep trying, which in turn makes the game more fun. It encourages you to keep going. Hey, here's another pushover boss. You just hit him with the stone axe a few times, and when you run out, just do a power charge at him. 
Now you may see these two boss fights I showed you and think this game is insanely easy. Oh, but there's some real butt breakers. You just keep watching, I'll show them to you. Now one of the main mechanics in this game you'll be using a lot is grabbing on the ledges. Just hold A while you're jumping and you can climb up a ledge by pushing up. What's interesting is that you can climb ledges farther away than you think you can. If you don't think you can jump that far and make it, you probably can. The hitbox is actually bigger than you think, so you can grab ledges that other Otherwise, look out of reach. Blind stew moment. I didn't see the spikes right fucking in front of me. Now you've also got special moves you can do like flying and high jumping and other stuff. Gazoo will give you a list of powers that you can do. And the way you unlock those powers is you play those basketball games. Every time you win, you get a new power. Guys, I can't even come up with jokes about this game. It's good. It's an actual decent good game. I like it. I played it all the way through and it's good. But it does have some stuff that bothers me. There was one particular level in this game where I almost gave up. The ice level. Oh my god. The person that came up with the ice physics for this game should be drug outside and shot. So when you walk, you start sliding as soon as you let go of the D-pad, which is normal for ice physics, but you slide infinitely. Unless you push the D-pad in the opposite direction, you will slide for all eternity, and it takes a while to stop your momentum. Meaning you have got to be really careful doing platforming. Shit's more slippery than a bad dragon covered in WD-40. Now this part with the rotating platform platforms on the spike ceiling. I watched Joel play this part and he had a lot of trouble with it, but here's how you do it. The trick is you have to fall and then press and hold A to grab onto the ledge. Then it's a matter of just jumping to the next platform when it's furthest away from the spike ceiling. It's one of those things that looks more difficult than it is. You could use Gazoo's fly ability to get through here, but you run the risk of either hitting the ceiling or running out of coins because the fly is powered by coins. I don't know how Joel, somebody who beat Battletoad and Desert Bus multiple times had trouble with this. I'm just saying. I hope to God he doesn't watch this. Chips are dinner, Joel. This boss is so hard, the NES can't display him correctly. For one thing, he's got a really messed up hitbox. By the time you hit him, he's run into you, and to top it all off, the floor is ice. This boss kicked my ass like I was a crypto miner locked in a room full of PC gamers overloaded on G Fuel. See what I did there? I made a joke my audience can relate to. Laugh, you fucks! The strategy I came up with was standing in one spot instead of running up to him, because that will just get you killed. Then hit him with a charged club shot shot when he gets close and immediately jump. It took a while to get the timing right, but when I did, boy was it satisfying when I took him down. So remember kids, with enough determination you can achieve anything. And save states, lots of save states. There's a castle stage that kind of fucks with you to begin with because there's not that many enemies and you think these skeletons are just cosmetic, but oh no, here they come. There is one bullshit trap where you got the lava coming up and you gotta try to grab onto the ledges and you cannot mess this up. You gotta get it perfect. It's not impossible though, you can do it. There's apparently a spot in this level where you had to fight Frankenstein's monster, but I found a way to skip this part. Well, not before getting stunned after getting hit killed me. See, I can't do anything. I just gotta watch myself die. So here I can just use the fly superpower and just fly my way over there and skip all that shit. And then you fight I uh, Count Rockula, I guess. Oh shit, that actually is a character. Ain't really much to say about this fight. He goes to one spot, you hit him. He goes to another spot, you hit him again. Rinse, repeat, and it goes on for a long time. This is the longest fight in the game. Then there's a ugh, water level where your deaths are the cheapest of the cheap. Yeah, very nice. I don't know what these are, fish or squids, but they sure do piss me off. This whole level's full of cheap deaths and leaps of faith you have to do to even know where you're going. This bubble platform area sucks ass because every time you jump, you lose sight of the bubbles. I love how the frame rate tanks on this part too. It's like the NES can't handle bubbles. The good news is there's no boss on this level. The level is the fucking boss. It just kind of ends. And then you end up on Asian stereotype land. You know, they did an Asian stereotype on the first season, and he was everything you could imagine he was. You know, the developers of this game was Japanese. I wonder if they saw that episode. This level ain't too bad other than Fred kills an innocent civilian and steals his cart. Yeah, but dab a murder. And then you fight this dinosaur, which I swear all I did was spam the club over and over and I beat him. After that level, you get in the time machine and you go to the final level, Orbit City in the future. And guys, Taito couldn't have handled 
handled this better. The first thing you hear when you get to the level is the Jetsons theme song. Oops. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's try that again. This time, don't suck. Well, not only are you greeted by the Jetsons theme song, you're also greeted by George Jetson himself. And he remembers you, because this takes place after the Jetsons meet the Flintstones. I made a YouTube poop of that a long time ago. George, it's Mr. Spacely. Oh, Mr. Spacely, two fuck off. Teacher, fuck off, Mr. Spacely. I spent a fortune romancing Cogswell asshole just to get probed in my butt. Congratulations, you made it through the unfunniest part of this video. Fuck my wife. I hate to go off subject again, but have you ever seen the Flintstones edit where it's you fuck my wife? It's from the movie Raging Bull. I hear I'll show it. You fuck my wife. What? You fuck my wife. Where do you get your balls big enough to ask me that? Man, she again. Did you or did you not? It's a sick question. You're a sick fuck, and I'm not that sick that I'm gonna answer it. I'm gonna leave. Understand you fucking wacko? Fuck you! Fucking screwball, you. Fuck your mother! Sorry, I just love that video. I love that when you duck, Fred's head just disappears. It's like it goes shroom into the shirt. So the last level is definitely a last level. It throws out all the stops. Everything you think you know about the game is gonna be tested. Oh shit, it's Ed 209! And this is the third video in the row where I've talked about Robocop. I can't escape him, he's everywhere. This is definitely the hardest part, having a platform on these little bitty ass platforms while enemies are trying to kill you. But once you get past it, it's time for the final boss, man. Here it is. It's all led up to this point. So this final boss has three forms. The first form is the one that's hardest to dodge, which sucks because then your life will be way down for the second and third forms. The second form is a joke. You can literally stun lock him to death. Holy shit, it's the Technodrome. Come on, kill him, kill him. Oh, no. It's all about doing that first part right. You can't duck to dodge the missiles, neither. You either gotta jump over them or something. Well, it took a lot of save scumming, but I did not feel like doing that level over again. So, there we go. Die, die, die! Dino and Hoppy beat the shit out of the guy. Dino is reunited with Fred. And they all go home and celebrate. And that's where the adventure ends. Well, there you go. If you've always wanted to see the rescue of Dino and Hoppy and what it's all about, there you go. That's the game. But the video isn't over yet. We still got plenty more games to look at. Three years later, Taito would make a sequel to this game, The Flintstones Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. And this must be an ultra rare game or something because this thing goes for insane money on eBay. I saw a sold listing where somebody won the game for $1,700 and it didn't even work. And they're still charging $5 shipping. Man, put free shipping on that shit. You probably bought that for 10 bucks at a pawn shop. But here we go. We're about to play that ultra rare game. So Pebbles and Bam Bam go missing and Fred and Barney set out to find them. Now in this game you can play as either Fred or Barney and choose them by pushing select. Barney has a slingshot that isn't as powerful as Fred's club and he also can't climb ledges but what he can do is grab onto poles. Ugh. I have a bad relationship with poles. If you want to know why, watch my video about the Grinch. And these poles are their own special kind of bullshit. You can climb up top of them and jump off of them, but you can't walk on them. You have to kind of fiddle around with the A button and up button too to climb up, and half the time it acts like it doesn't want to do it, like the game is arguing with you. This is a reference to something. There, I acknowledged it. They find Pebbles and Bam Bam, but they're separated by lava. And Gazoo says there's a fire dinosaur that can fly them over to Pebbles and Bam Bam and get them. So now the objective becomes get to the fire dinosaur. Other than that, this is pretty much the same game with different levels. And you know what? It's pretty good too. I don't think it's as good as the other one, but it's still a decent game. Overall, it's considerably harder than the last game. This game does not fuck around. It's got those kind of levels where you have to play them and die a few times before you figure out what you're supposed to do. A good example would be right here. You don't see that sign until it's too late. Also, did you notice Yabba Dabba Doo has a trademark on it? Reminds me of Freddy's coming. You can't cheese the bosses in this game. You have to actually try. Some of them have a certain way you gotta kill them, like knocking rocks at him. This surfing level can suffocate from the consumption of my entire ass. There's spots in this level that you have to get absolutely perfect or you're gonna die every time. Let's try that again. Again. 
Again! You see, what happens is I keep hitting that horse fish or whatever the fuck you call them, and then I get stunned and I can't jump over that platform. Every single time. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result. And this level drove me insane. I did it! Okay, do not screw- Oh, fuck, oh, fuck! I still got one more life, I still got one more life. Okay. Do not go! Oh, damn it! This level can eat a doggy dick sandwich with mustard and custard. Remember when I said you can't cheese the bosses? I lied. You can cheese this one. Check this shit out. Yo, it's kind of therapeutic after that horrible surfing level I was just in. I could just stand here and spank the monkey. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean spank the monkey. Then there's this level where you're inside a giant kitchen and you have to launch yourself from inside a giant toaster. And you know what they say? No, really. What do they say? The final stage starts kicking your ass ass pretty early on, steadily having to run away from things that are chasing you. You got two final bosses, you got this little dragon guy and then you got his mama. The first one isn't so bad once you get the timing down, but it's another one of those that seems to go on for eternity. And then you fight mama dragon and guys, I couldn't do it. I tried, oh boy did I try, but she is just too damn tough. You got these boulders, you got these fire projectiles, you got her breathing fire at you. No matter where you get, there doesn't seem to be a safe zone anywhere. And I just had to deem this final boss too tough for me. Somebody out there can beat her, but not me. With all that said, I don't think this game is as good as Dino and Hoppy. But if you like Dino and Hoppy and want to try some more, go emulate this. Now let's go over to the Game Boy with the Flinch Stone's King Rock Treasure Island. Fred finds a treasure map in the quarry and thinks that treasure would be a good anniversary present for Wilma. So Fred goes off to go look for it. This game's got an interesting mechanic in that you can stun enemies and use them as platforms. You can ride Dino just like Yoshi and Dino will let you jump higher. But this game's pretty decent. It makes good use of its core gimmick. The graphics and the levels are kind of stripped down and boring and you do get cheap deaths every now and then. But I do feel like it's one of those games that if you keep your expectations expectations low, you're not going to be disappointed. It is a Flintstones game after all. It's not going to be Super Mario Land 2. The water level is kind of strange in this game in that you still kind of walk and move normal despite being underwater. And anywhere that they could put spikes to annoy you, they did in this level. Good grief. Then there's these spots where there's some fast current going right in the middle of the water. It's really disorienting because you got this one section in the middle where your jump doesn't act quite right. Then you got spots where the current is bringing you up to the spikes. And then there's this part where you got to stun all the enemies and jump on top of them. And man, this part part is aggravating. Beautiful. And then there's this asshole that pissed me off to no end with his stupid rocks and his bobbing head. What a little jackass. He makes me mad just looking at him. Well, then there's a car stage. It reminds me of that damn surfing stage from the previous game. And I died almost instantly on this stage because there's a rock that you hit that I thought was part of the background. I died and game over. And guess what? This game doesn't have unlimited continues. So you got to start the game all the way way the fuck over again. But I don't because I'm not playing that game anymore. You know what? I take back what I said about it. That game sucked. But we've got another Game Boy game and it's based on the Flintstones movie and guess who fucking made this game? Oh boy, when I saw that logo, I knew I was in for some shit. I just got through talking about how terrible ocean games are. So this could only go one way. And guys, I was pleasantly surprised. Okay, first of all, they tried to make it look like John Goodman Fred Flintstone and this sprite is pretty terrifying and I had done made up my mind that this game was going to be terrible but in all god honesty it was fine the best way I can describe it is it's inoffensive it's not gonna win any awards but this was a perfectly serviceable decent competent platformer the bosses kind of confused me to begin with because when they say they've got one more hit point they actually have two when the hit points are all gone they still got one one more to go. Kind of a weird design choice, but okay. Every time you beat a stage, you get a random bonus stage that you can play. 
play. Like this one where you whack a certain amount of dinos and then you get extra lives. Now you're Barney inside a daycare center where babies can hurt you. What kind of weak little wimp is Barney if babies can hurt him? What, do they claw you with those razor sharp baby fingernails? If you've ever been scratched by a baby, you know exactly what I'm talking about. What, a baby's never scratched you before? The little shits are feral up here. Luckily, you can give these babies a concussion and put them to sleep. Did you know that you can throw a baby off a two-story building and it'll probably live? Can you tell I don't like children? Uh-oh, it looks like the textures didn't load in on this level. Yo, what's with the frog? What's up with this guy? He's got like three heads conjoined together. I shall call you Tom. Now this level, this is pure ocean right here. You have to go around this non-linear level and flip switches in a certain order so you can activate a lift. It's not that bad of a level though, and it's over before you know it. Here's something I thought was kind of weird. There's these secret arcade games you can find where you can play Space Invaders. Now here's why this is weird. Taito made most of the 8 and 16-bit Flintstones games. You know what Taito also made? Space Invaders. But yet this is an ocean game and it has Space Invaders. It's a really odd coincidence. Here's another thing that bugged me. There's a level in this game that supposedly takes place in ancient ruins, but but this is the Stone Age. So wouldn't they be new ruins or not ruins at all? In fact, doesn't the Stone Age predate ancient Aztec ruins? This level makes no sense whatsoever. It's like making a game about the Old West and the hero drives a Tesla. Dutch, I was charging my iPhone and then I ran the Tesla all out of juice. Arthur, you best be getting an extension cord or I'm gonna wrap it around your neck. Is it me or does that look like John Goodman puking? This game just continues to get stranger and stranger. Some of these levels, I swear, if you change Fred Flintstone's sprite to something else, you would make me believe this is a different game. Oh god, Wilma, what did they do to you? You look like you have a trash bag on your head. I don't have much more to say about this game other than I played the whole thing and even beat the final boss. This was an okay game. It never pissed me off at any point. It really surprises me this is an ocean game. Or is it? As it turns out, Ocean contracted a different company called Twilight to make this game. So even though this was published published by Ocean, they didn't make it. But you know what Ocean did make? The Flintstones on Super Nintendo. Oh boy, this is the real shit right here. Well, at least the graphics look pretty good in this game. Look at that parallax scrolling, that's kinda cool. But oh, it just blinds you to what it's actually gonna be. So you got a club in this game like you do the NES games, and there's a lot of input delay to it. And there's way too many animation frames in it, it should just be whack. So trying to actually get it to hit anything's kinda hard. You can also climb ledges like the NES games, but it's really picky about where you can climb it at. Sometimes you'll climb just fine sometimes you need to jump a few times before it'll catch not only did they manage to fuck up the animation of the club but you also can't use the club in the air you can't club in midair in the nes games you could you know i feel like if fred can grab ledges and he's got a club it almost makes me think that maybe they played the taito games and this is kind of a poor representation of what they are I hate these freaking frogs. They're so hard to hit because the hitbox on the club is fucked up. And they move faster than I can react because the damn controls are so sluggish. And I hate these guys with the stupid boulders. Even when I jump, it still hits me. Grab onto the ledge. Grab onto the ledge. Grab it. Damn. Damn. Oh, God bless America. You know what? I'm not gonna give this game any more of my time. I know it's bad. It's an ocean game. Yo, this game over music's pretty good, though. Anyway, let's go back to the Taito games. At least I know those are competent. When it comes to the 16-bit era, that's where Flintstones games peaked. Yeah, you had one bad ocean game, but Taito brought us the Flintstones on Sega Genesis and the Treasure of Sierra Madrock on Super Nintendo. Both of these games get it right all over. On the Genesis game, the controls are smooth and fluid, just like the animation. The graphics look really nice for 16-bit, and the levels are a perfect mix of challenging 
boring and fun. It's just a good game. I don't even mind the water level. I normally have a bone to pick about water levels, but this one is okay. The game never feels boring because they always throw something new at you. My favorite was the train level where you have to watch out for the tunnels and the signals. The level is very well laid out and it looks pretty good too. The later levels get pretty hard though, like the lava level. Oh man, that one was hard, but felt so rewarding to finish. Flintstones on Genesis, I can highly recommend. Check it out, man. The Super Nintendo game, The Treasure of Sierra Mad Rock, gets it even better. It takes all the good ideas from the Genesis game and expands on it. In this game, you have a board that you can roll dice on, and each space is a stage. Your idea is to get to the end of the board, but you don't have to do every single stage on the board. You also take a turn as Barney. I don't know why, but you could play this with two players, so that's got something to do with it, I guess. The difficulty varies a lot in these stages. Sometimes they're difficult as shit. Sometimes they're insultingly easy. But that does add a lot of variety to the game, and I ain't complaining. When you beat a stage, you earn a number depending on what number was on the timer, and if you get a row of them on this board, you get extra lives. You can get as much as seven extra lives by filling up this board. Sometimes you'll land on an enemy space and have to fight a mini boss, and again, their difficulty can drastically vary. Sometimes Wilma or Betty will find you and move you to a random space. Bitch. There's also foot races you can do to get items in the game that make the game a little easier. Man, don't you love these Mode 7 graphics? I want to see somebody make a new racing game with graphics like this. There's also bonus games you can do, including Konami Simulator. <laughs> You laughed, don't lie. Again, this game is a banger. I can't believe how good these two games are. Give them a try when you get the chance. And that, my friends, is gonna do it for this episode. Now, there were a few more Flintstones games that came after, like a bowling game and a kart racer and an odd version of Burger Time, but I just wanted to do the games that were the most interesting to me, and I hope they were to you too. If you like this video, please do share it with other people because the algorithm doesn't do shit for me. I rely on word of mouth to get my views and if you really like what i do consider being a patron for one dollar you get your name on the board for five dollars you get to see the videos for anyone else and you get a discord server anyway that's gonna be it out of me today's folks i am Stuart k riley i'll see y'all